Morning. Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Mead. I'm here today with my guest Dustin Lee and I am just really excited to share with you his story and to share with you a little bit about how you can learn from Dustin if you want to build your own creative business and if you want to really just wake up more days doing something you actually care about and do less of the stuff that you know doesn't light you up. So Dustin, thanks for joining us uh, and doing this case study with us today. And um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started on your entrepreneurial journey and uh, a little bit about your business. Okay, uh, thanks for having me. world for my early adult life. I worked in banks and um, a personal banker and a teller and just different things like that and really hated it basically. And I started reading blogs like Zen Habits and I got a four hour work week and started reading your work back when you had Illuminated Mind. And I really wanted to get out of the job and just do work I love but I had no idea how to do it. So I, I kind of was a wantrepreneur for a lot of years trying to make blogs and do different things and not having a lot of success at it. Um, and then finally, right before I got married about six years ago, I decided that it was now or never and I basically quit my job, had no backup, had very little in savings and I really wanted to be a designer and I just totally just jumped into it with absolutely no support um, except for my wife working and supporting me and um, I guess six years later now um, I'm making more money than I ever have and I work on my own schedule and it's it's awesome so. cool can you tell us a little bit about uh, what your business is and uh, what kind of products you have and how you run it uh, yeah so my business is called retro supply and um, it basically stemmed from the fact that I really love retro design. I've always loved vintage retro style design. And I was working with you on a project, and which was Playbook. And we were working for a really long time on it. And it was not profitable as quickly as we thought. We like, kept on putting it out like two, two more months and it's going to be profitable. Three more months and it's going to be profitable. And it got to this point where my first daughter, my baby, was going to be born in a few weeks and I had no other income coming in and I really needed to make money. And I really just, for the first time in my life, just decided I'm going to do what I really like, which is vintage and retro design, and I'm just going to see if I can sell PSD templates and Adobe Illustrator templates. and. When I started, my hope was that I could get a couple hundred dollars a month. Maybe if I was really successful, right. I could like make a thousand dollars a month and just like barely get by. And as it turned out, um, I just happened to have the right skill set to be really successful at it. And um, Retro right. Supply ended up being probably one of the best selling providers of those kind of goods anywhere. Um, along with being the number one seller on creative market as of today, so. Right, that's awesome. And you even uh, recently flew out to San Francisco to spend some time with the creative market people and to hang out with them because you've been such a great uh, story of how someone, like a, a person with a family, you know, and just like, that just wants to make a good living um, and have, you know, the freedom to be able to spend time with their, their kid. Like that's such a good, a, a good example and good story of how someone can like just have an idea and really stick with it and then make it work just with persistence and hard work and, you know, paying attention to what people like. I think that that's something you've done a really good job at. So, um, it's awesome. How about we switch gears a little bit and talk about a time where you failed or really struggled uh, getting your business started or maybe before you started this business? Um. Yeah, yeah, I, honestly, I spent most of my entrepreneur life failing. 
So I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did that constantly. Um, it really, like, there was so many times in these past couple of years where I would just, like, wake up and think, maybe you just don't have what it takes to do this. Maybe this isn't right for you, and maybe you just don't realize you don't have the ability to do this. This isn't you. Yeah. Um, and what reinforced that for me was just that when I started reading, you know, blogs about building your own business and four hour work week and different things like that, I started so many different blogs. I had a blog called Beating the Grind that was about making a business yep. or working for yourself, which was really crazy because I worked for someone else at that time and I had no idea how to work for myself. <laughs> and I was writing a blog about it. Yeah. So I did like three or four of those which got like zero traffic. I just had no idea and so it was just failure after failure um, and it was just either like insanity or stupidity <laughs> that kept me going and I'm so glad that I did because I eventually did break through that wall and um, honestly became more successful than I would have ever imagined I would have become so if you're someone out there who is starting to think maybe this isn't for me maybe I'm not talented enough or don't have the right skill set or the right time um, you can definitely do it. Um, it just, you have to be more persistent and willing to keep working when everyone else gives up. Yeah. I think one of the big themes for entrepreneurs that have become successful is that they see failure as just learning experiences. And their their perception of failure changes. Whereas in the beginning, you fail and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm horrible! <laughs> like this is never gonna work! Like what's wrong with me?" And eventually, you get to a point. I don't know. Maybe it's just you uh, you fail so many times that it becomes normal to you. But you get to this point where you're like, "Oh, that's that was interesting. I guess <laughs> that's on to the next thing." <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's totally true. It's like. Um... I think when you like, if you're not an entrepreneur or if you're first starting, you look at failure and you think, if I fail, it's all over and that proves that I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And after you do it for a while, you realize that failure is just a very ne necessary part of the whole process. Right. Um, and there's lots of really cool quotes on that. I used to have this bumper sticker that I put up um, in my office and it said, fail till you succeed. Nice. And that was a really good reminder for me, and I think it was, oh, who said it? There was a great quote. Oh, it was by uh, Mark Cuban, owner of Dallas Mavericks and big technology mm -hmm. uh, billionaire. He said, you only have to be right once. Oh, so nice. You fail over and over and over and over and over, but you have nothing to lose, so you're still at zero. But if you can win once, like, that can do a ton for you. And I think that was inspiring for me, too, because I felt like I did yeah. succeed once if I just keep failing. Oh, that's such a good way of looking at it. I love that. Awesome. So everyone listening to this, I really want you to take that to heart and realize, like, all you have to do is get one thing right. Like, you don't have to have some genius master plan where everything is figured out perfectly like all you need to do is fail enough times <laughs> until you get one thing that starts to work and then just do more of that i mean like sometimes i think it's like glamorized failing is glamorized by entrepreneurs and it's probably just a coping strategy but yeah right it's, it's helpful if you're learning something and taking something away from it if you're doing the same thing over and over you're probably just going to frustrate yourself but right yeah one of the biggest lessons I learned was from recently was from Jonathan Fields of reframing the way I see my the things that I engage in with my business, the things that I the projects I start as experiments rather than these like plans of these definite plans and like I have to achieve this like but instead it's an experiment. So I think anything we can do to kind of like relieve the pressure on ourselves of like it has to be this way is awesome. So, uh, how about we go on the opposite direction now? And how about you share with us one of your biggest like breakthrough moments or aha moments where, you know, maybe after you failed enough times, something actually started to stick and started to make traction. Yeah. Okay. I have a favorite story on this. So this was a breakthrough moment for me. Like, remember how I was telling you how I started to wonder if really question if really I had it with right. to actually succeed. 
this was the moment when like that all collapsed and it was like the matrix and everything like collapsed around me and I realized that I really do have what it takes to do this, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And that was when I had been building Retro Supply for about a month and I had made this conscious effort to every single day go to Starbucks and work for a couple hours on just building products, just working on the business. Mm -hmm. And one of my products was featured by Creative Market, who's been a huge supporter of my business and uh, has done a lot to help me succeed. And they had featured me. And I remember my phone, like, you know, gave me a notification in my email. that, And I looked at it and someone had bought a product. Mm -hmm. And then it started beeping like beep 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 beep, 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 and it was like a slot machine. It was like I was like triple like, cherries on the slot machine, and it just kept making this beeping sound. And each beep was like eight dollars going into my bank account, and like I totally lost my composure. Like I just grabbed my stuff and it into my backpack, and like did the fastest, like you know, crazy fast walk home because I wanted to show my wife like look at this, you know, like, look at my phone, like, that. every beep is, like, eight bucks in our bank account, and um, by the end of the day, I think that I had made somewhere around $1,500, which, you know, that would have been weeks of work in any other job I've ever had, and at that moment, I was like, you can really do this, like, this is something that, like, is in, within the realm of, like, possibility, and um, since then, I mean, that was, a uh, that ended up being, and I remember correctly, an $11,000 month, and since then, I've had, you know, $20,000 months, um, and this month is looking like it could be uh, 27, maybe, if I do really well, $30,000 a month. So, um, anyways, to go back, that, that first time in Starbucks when I really made a lot of sales was just a really breakthrough moment emotionally, yeah. really for me. And just to kind of extract um, what what I believe is one of the biggest reasons why you had that success and just to share and highlight that and underline that for everyone that's watching this is that you carved out two hours every morning before you did anything else and you were waking up at what like 5, 5.30 every morning like it was dark I don't yeah like a madman right yeah yeah like Right. So, I, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that for people like you, whatever is going on, if you really want to, to start your own creative business, you really want to start getting traction, carve out that time, do whatever you have to do to make some amount of time a priority before you start doing anything else in your day. Because otherwise, you know, other people's priorities, other people's goals will find their way to sink their teeth into your time and you have to be ruthless about it. So, um, Dustin, what, oh, so go ahead. One thing, I think this could be inspiring to people. Sure. Um, while I was doing this, we were working on Playbook and, um, that was a full-time job. I mean, we were spending <laughs> yeah. 40 hours a week working on this. Yep. So for anyone that has a job and is trying to do this, like it is possible. Like when I was doing this, like I was working two hours in the morning before I worked on Playbook all day long. Right. So it wasn't like I just like had all this free time in the world. So um, yeah, right. it definitely is possible with a little amount of time every morning or every evening. Cool. Awesome, man. The next question I want to ask you is for those maybe freelancers or those people working at jobs or people maybe that have started a small creative business, they maybe they're probably solopreneur. Um, what would you recommend to them if they want to start establishing their own creative business? Like what, what steps would you recommend that they start taking in a practical way? I think the biggest part of it is it's really, truly is a mental game. Um, in the sense that when I work with you and when I, you know, now that I've become successful with my business and I see a lot of people doing similar things, the hardest thing for people to get over is starting. People want to analyze, like, well, what's the perfect opportunity I, I should take? You know, like, is this the best, like, 
area for me to start in? What's the best platform? Like, what's the mm -hmm. best first product? Yep. And people do that until eventually they just get burnt out from trying to figure it out, and then they move on until they restart that same process again. So yep. I think the biggest thing is just to accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes, accept the fact that the first things you make aren't going to be good, and put something out. Like, you have to put something out, and you brought up a good point earlier about the fact that you almost have to think of it as experiments. I think you said Jonathan Fields had said that. Right. You really do. You have to think of it as experiments and not think of it as an extension of yourself. Um, for example, with retro supply, I could have said, well, this doesn't really represent me because I'm not all about retro and vintage stuff, but I didn't right. think of it like that. I thought, I'm just making this business and I'm going to try to sell retro and vintage stuff because I like it. And right. it's not me. It's just something I'm doing for fun. Yeah. And I think when you do that, and you're willing to look bad and make mistakes, that is literally the hardest part. There's no magic to making something succeed. It's, it's making things and putting them out there. And if you want attention from other people and you want interest from other people, you have to put something out. People don't you know, interview or talk to or ask questions to people that, want, that tell them all about what they hope to do in the future. You stuff out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be interviewing you now talking about how you've made six figures a year selling Photoshop files if you were still thinking about the perfect Photoshop file that you could create or whether people are going to like it. And I, I think that's really one of your strengths that you have this uh, propensity to not plan things out so much. And you, you've told me before, like, I'm not very good at planning. And I actually, you know... It sounds like, a, at first it sounds like, oh, like you could see that as like, oh, well, you know, that's a, that could be seen as like a cop out, you know, like you should just try to get better at planning. But really you've taken that like quote unquote weakness and turned it into one of your biggest strengths. And it reminds me of this quote that I heard the other day uh, by George S. Patton and it says, a, a plan, a good plan, violently executed today, is better than a uh, great plan next week. <laughs> totally, yeah. That's, I'm going to remember that. And so many, yes. Yeah, so, so many people that are listening to this, I'm sure it's probably you that you have this idea, or you have a bunch of ideas, and you're stuck, and you're kind of analyzing the game from the outside, and you have to get into the game before you actually get results because otherwise you can't get any feedback you can't know if what you're doing is going to work so i just encourage you today like do something to implement and put into action one of your ideas um all right so the next question i want to ask you kind of, because i kind of have this theme in my life and in the people that i work with of total immersion and this is something that i recommend to people like don't dip your toe in the water don't try to feel things out like don't just read a book about it like read 10 books about it if you really want to do it or if you really want to do something don't just like give yourself 30 minutes a week give yourself an hour or two every day or more if you can and surround yourself with people that are going to help you that have done what you want to do like really try as much as you pop as much as you possibly can to immerse yourself in whatever it is you want to do. And I just want to know from you, has immersion or really going all in impacted your business? And if so, um, how has it done that for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's always a balance there. You know, a lot of people have families or financial obligations and it's hard to just drop everything and immerse yourself. Um, so obviously- that Absolutely, varies. Yep. That varies from person to person and that's a personal decision you have to make based on your situation. but. Um, for me, I can honestly say I would not have succeeded if I had not done that. Um, like I said, I quit my job, which eliminated all of my income, and started trying to be a graphic designer. I never had a client before. Um, in fact, I went to school then. I didn't even have real training at that point. Um, I just literally quit my job started like studying graphic design, started reading everything on it, started just doing it nonstop. I just woke up every day and pretended like it was a job 
And at first, I didn't even know what to do. Like, I didn't. I was like, "What do I do with my day?" Um, but yeah, it was total. It was total immersion, um, and that it would have taken me years more if I hadn't done that. Um, and then that also comes back to the fact that opportunities come up because of that. Because about a year and a half into doing that, I had met you, and you had eventually, after doing some small projects for you, you had eventually hired me, and that opportunity wouldn't have came if I had a, if I had had a job that I was working. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Right. Um, and then that, from that, I went into even deeper immersion because I was working with you, and uh, that was super, super valuable. Um, and this is not like, you know, what is, what would you call it? this? Isn't lip service? It's truly true that when I worked with you, I realized. Everything that I thought I knew about how to make money online, doing what I loved, was wrong. Like I was focusing all my energy in the wrong places, and I didn't know it. Like I was so oblivious to it. When you started, you know, showing me this is how we do this, and this is what's important, and this is what we focus on, it was like I had to like turn around and like, like, whoa, I'm walking the wrong. I've been rocking, walking the wrong direction for years. Like I didn't know. Right. Um, and by being dropped into that and having was priority set for me was massive and that resulted in me making you know six figures a year from this business because when I did go out and do my own business because I had been immersed so deeply in this living and breathing it when I did go out on my own I immediately knew as soon as the opportunity as soon as I started making some sales I knew here's the things I need to do. Here's the things I need to prioritize. To increase it and to grow it, yeah. To increase sales because it right. could have easily been that I did that one product and it did well and I didn't know what to do next. But because I had immersed myself and literally lived and breathed this for the past couple of years, as soon as I saw the opportunity, I knew how to jump on it and magnify it into a much more profitable business. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And for those of you that um, aren't familiar, Dustin was one of the people that really helped me rebrand from Illuminated Mind to Paid to Exist, which is what it is right now, and help uh, redesign the brand and really just made it so visceral and so compelling. And he was one of the key people that um, made that happen. And the way that I met Dustin, which is actually an interesting story, is he... Uh, he just emailed me and asked me like if he could do some some design thing for free for me and I didn't have anything at the time so I I told him like yeah I think my wife Evian needs something and like I think you made like an arrow design or something for her and then eventually I had a project and I was like yeah I would love for you to work on this and I was so impressed that you were willing to kind of do a test project just for you know just because you're passionate about what you did and because you wanted to, you know, you wanted to show me and like, you didn't have any strings attached. I just, I thought that was so incredible. And, um, that led that, you know, that led us to working together. And we've of course had a, a really great friendship from that. So I think one of the, one of the things that I've always admired about you is your willingness to like, just take a risk and not think about it too much and just say like, I'm going to try this and I'm going to email some people and, you know, maybe something will happen, maybe it won't. And I, I just think that's something really valuable that anyone watching this can take away from this is like, don't overthink it. Just, you know, try to help people try, like, if you have an idea, try it, like put it out there and then ask yourself, like, if it worked, like, why did it work? How can you do more of it? If it didn't work, ask yourself, why didn't it work? And then try something else, you know? Um, so that's awesome, man. I, I, I really appreciate you sharing that story. And the next question is really um, about community because this is a big piece of uh, paid to exist. And, you know, I'm really big on bringing a community around you. So, you have support. A lot of people that want to be entrepreneurs, no one around them really relates to what they're doing. They think they're crazy. They think like, why can't you just be happy because you have a good job or something like that? So um, what would you recommend to someone that's, you know, that wants to build a creative business but feels like they're doing everything alone? 
without support or community, how, how can they start to get some more of that in their lives? Right. Um, well, the first thing is, like I said before, I really think you just need to start and do something. Yep. It's, it's hard to be a part of things or it's just a necessary step. You have to make something to start doing it and you have to get to the point where you're comfortable making things and not feeling like it's a representation of your own value. So right. putting things out there and not being afraid of failing. Um, so that's just a prerequisite. But as far as community goes, I was really lucky in the sense that you know I had been following you for quite a while and you had been one of my like online heroes. And I was lucky enough that I got to end up working for you, which was like this crazy like you know dream come true. But I also saw people in Trailblazer, and I saw people in a lot of other people's programs where there are communities. And yeah. I probably never would have invested in one of those before I started working with you. I mean, yours or anyone's. I didn't, I didn't see the value in it. And then once I saw what was happening to people in those programs, I realized this is the best thing you could possibly do for yourself because having other people around you is going to exponentially grow how quickly you learn. Just like right. I said, by working with you, I had learned all these skills over the course of about a year that were definitely responsible for the success I had. Um, you can get that from a community. Right. You can get that from having someone, people that have more experience than you, from people that can look at what you're doing and say, hey, you're totally going the wrong direction. You, don't, you have your priorities wrong. And letting you know that. You won't know. The thing is when you're by yourself and you're a lone wolf, like you don't know you're going the wrong direction. Right, That's yeah. Idea. And you have no feedback. Like yeah. You said, like in the real world, like most people are kind of like, oh, you're an entrepreneur online? Okay, so basically you're just saying you don't do anything. Like, <laughs> we've talked about that. But whenever like you say, right. oh, I have an online business, I work for myself, people are like, oh, so you're unemployed. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I really, I promise. Like, yeah. So yeah, getting into a community and interacting with people and getting feedback is so valuable. In fact, I would venture to say that just one piece of advice that you get can literally change your entire your the entire arc of your business or your life. Right. Yeah. So anyone that's listening to this, uh, there's a few ways you can you can start to have more community. I mean, the first option, like you said, is you can, you can pay for a community that already exists through a program or something like that. I think that's a, uh, one of the surest ways you can do it because then you're like, you're, you're paying for something that's already been set up for you. The other option is you can try to go out and create it. And I think this is a completely valid option. Um, it takes, some uh, work, it takes some time to find and connect with people, but I am a big believer, like if you want to have more community or more connections, like just go out and start talking to people. Find people that have left comments on blogs that you love and email them, uh, go to their websites, find a way to contact them. Um, you know, ask them if they'd want to meet up on Skype with you to chat about, you know, trading ideas for your businesses, find something that you can do to stop just having those, those conversations only in your own head where you don't, like you said, you're a lone wolf and you don't know, like if you're going in the wrong direction and I don't know, um, what, yeah, I think yeah. the craziest part about it is the whole, you don't know what you don't know thing. Right. Like you really, like when I started working with you, I really did not know what I did not know. In fact, when the opportunity came to work with you, if you remember, I was like, well, let me talk to my wife. Let me think about it for a day or so. Yep. And I almost said, I almost said, you know what? Like, I think I can build this better and quicker on my own and be more successful. Right. Yep. And then I thought to myself, no, like, how can you pass up this opportunity to be immersed in this and yep. see all of this from the inside? And like that decision was like a very, very important decision. So um, definitely, whether you build your own community or you pay to get into a community, they're both very valid options and um, yeah, critical. Critical. 
Okay, man. Um, let's go to a more, I think this is a fun question that I always like to ask people, which is what's, what's one book that's changed uh, your life that you want to recommend to people that are watching this? Oh, man. And I know it's always hard to like pick one, but... Yeah, uh, you, there's so many. Um, I'll just go with my gut answer, which is The Alchemist. Yeah. Uh, you know, that practical business advice, per se, Mm -hmm. But it does talk all about the mindset of just believing in yourself. Yeah. Um, and it does it through an almost overly simplistic, um, just very simple, beautiful story about someone following their dream. Right. And that, for me, has been a book that I've read over and over again that has kind of rekindled my excitement about building things every time I read it. That's awesome. So... How about you, though? I'm, I'm curious. Sorry. I'm curious if you had to pick one book. Oh, man. <clears throat> if I had to pick one book for people reading or people watching this, uh, I, yeah, there's, there's a few books that have totally... It's rare, but sometimes there's a book that comes along and it kind of completely changes the way you think about everything or, or that topic where you're like, ah, I thought I kind of understood that. And then you're like, holy shit, I didn't understand this at all. And I, I would say one book like that for me was uh, Vagabonding. And it's about travel, but it actually is more about life and principles for living your life on your own terms. And that was one of the books, uh, I think I, I heard about that from Tim Ferriss in his book, uh, Four Hour Work Week. And that's, that's just one of my favorite books in terms of like really practical ways of looking at life that help you have more joy and make more powerful decisions and live more on your own terms. So I would say that's one of them for me. But I could I could talk about like all the books that have changed my life for hours. Like I'm such a book nerd, and yeah, I've seen your bookshelf. It's like one awesome book after another. You could probably just take a photograph of the bookshelf and yeah, I could. Paste it up. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Um, the next question is: If you had to start all over with your existing knowledge, uh that you have, so you know everything that you still know now, you still have the same skills that you have now, but you had to start all over without any of the resources that you have, what would you do? I would make something really amazing, like in my field, which would be graphic design, I'd make some sort of really amazing resource, and then I would offer it for free as an ethical bribe to build a list. Um, so obviously I would set up a page, a landing page on my site with an eth eth ethical bribe um, with a really, really great like resource that people would pay for that I gave them for free. And I would start building my list. Building an email list. I'd traffic that list. Like, um, I just read a book called Launch by Jeff Walker. I think his name is Jeff Walker. Yep. And um, he talks about how having a list is he calls it he says it's basically a license to print money which is kind of like <laughs> it's kind of extreme of saying that. yeah 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 it's more than that it's like it's a way to build a community it's just a way to get people involved in what you're doing your your list is so critical and um that was yep. one of like the core things i knew from working with you how important a list was so as soon as i had some success i immediately started List. Yeah, so so important, so valuable, man. Like I think I, every entrepreneur I talk to would say that continuing to build their list is one of the most high leverage activities that they can do, no matter what stage of their business at is at, because it's just it's the biggest asset you have, and having a tribe, having people that are you know supporting you, and that will be your customers and that will spread the word about you is just 
the most valuable thing you can have. So yeah, for sure. And awesome. There's kind of like this aloof, there's this myth about this that it's only for like online marketers or right like that. Yeah. But if that's absolutely not true, like say it's a graphic designer, there's popular areas for graphic designers like Dribble or different just different sites to show your work or, or Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram or whatever. But the thing is, you're competing against a lot of other people, and you if you don't own those people as a list, they're on another person's platform. Right. And they can take that platform from you at any moment. Right. So having a list is your own way of having a direct connection to your audience that can't be taken from you, which is so valuable. So. Yeah, that's that's so true, man. And you know, I think. It's it's crazy to me sometimes how much I see like to me it just seems like common sense. I've been doing this so long like of course you should have a list, you should have an opt-in, like your whole site should be optimized to get people to sign up to your email list and you should be nurturing those people, you should be giving them lots of value. Um you should be having conversations with them, but it's so crazy that how many people in different fields just don't even know how important building a list is. Like I would, I would uh, probably guess that nine out of ten graphic designers don't have an email list. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. at least, right? I know some. I know some really, really successful graphic designers, and they don't have lists at all. It's crazy. They're successful, but they could be. <laughs> right. Lots of times they're successful, but they're still just barely getting by. Right. And the reason is because, like, the list is so valuable, and it's just, I think it's something that a lot of people just don't realize right. how valuable it is. If anyone who realizes truly how value, what, a, what a list is would never not build it. Right. It's the most valuable thing you'll ever, ever have. So if, if you're listening to this, if you're an, I don't care who you are, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, if you're a painter, if you're a writer, um, you know, if you're a coach, whatever your field is, there is a way you can build an email list. So find out something that you you feel your your audience would absolutely love from you. Create an ethical bribe. Put an opt-in at the top of your page, at the top of your homepage. I, I think that an email opt-in should be on every page unless it's a product page or a sales page, but it should be on every page and you should be driving people to sign up for that because guess what? After you get people on your email list, then you can tell them about, about your shows. Then you can tell them about um, you know what events you have coming up. Then you can tell them about what products you're working on. But if you don't optimize for that email list, you have no medium as... Dustin was saying to be able to have those direct conversations with your people. So yeah, if you haven't started an email list, do it today. Don't put it off anymore. Um, I think something else just to add a final thing to that is that lots of times when people put their offers, what they're going to give someone as a mm -hmm. for signing up, they're afraid to give them too much because they think if I give them too much, they won't buy something from me in the future or be right. a customer because I gave it all away. And the reality is you can never give too much away. Um, the more you give away, the more you prove to them that you will fulfill your promises and give them value, I think. Right. Um, like in my business, I give away nine paid resources when you sign up. So these are things that would retail probably for around 50 or $60 if you just went onto my site and put it in your shopping cart. Yep. And I give them to you for free for signing up. Um, and yep. once people realize that, they're like, wow, if he gives this away for free, what will he give me if I actually buy something? Yep. Um, so anyways, I just think it's really important. To so it. true. So important. And I, I've realized more and more uh, as an entrepreneur, especially online, what we're really selling is trust. And the more you can show people that you're going to give them incredible amounts of value and the more you can get them results, you know, do something to get them results or give them an experience. You change the relationship they have with you. So you go from being a person that like, I don't know about this person to like, this is a person that's impacted my life. 
And when that happens, they're more likely to trust you. They're more likely to open your emails, to want to know about what you're doing. And yeah, it's just so, so, so important. So build your email list, give them insane value and, you know, just take action on it. Um, stop putting it off. All right, Dustin. So the last question uh, of this interview is so many like gems and little nuggets of wisdom that I hope people take in this. But um, if you were to give one last piece of advice to anyone starting their entrepreneurial journey, what would that be? And how can people find out more about you? My one piece of advice would be put something out now, get something done now, not, not by the end of the month, not by the time the new year comes, right now like do it now get something out yep even if it's not perfect get it out and you will like open up a flood of opportunities for yourself um and then information about me you can follow me at, at hey dustin lee on twitter um and if you're a graphic designer you just want to see what the business is that i've been talking about with jonathan you can visit www.retrosupply.co and you can check out all the products that I'm offering there and what my business looks like. So. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Dustin, for doing this. I encourage you uh, to take action on what you've just learned. And that's it for now. Thanks, Dustin, for doing this. Thanks, All right. Take care, everyone.